What is relative frequency? In statistics, you find the relative frequency by taking the observations in a category divided by the total number of observations. The relative frequency tells you how large a category is compared to the other categories in a frequency table. It can be given as a fraction, decimal, or percentage. A relative frequency is always a number between 0 and 1, and the most common representation is a decimal. The sum of all relative frequencies in the same frequency table always adds up to 1. Let's look at an example to understand this better. In a survey, students were asked to choose their favorite option from five different band names. The results turned out like this. 27 voted for the geometries. 13 chose the graphing gurus. 5 liked the vectors. 94 voted for the binary beats. And 11 preferred integer funk. Notice that the binary beats got the most votes, so you can already tell that this was the most popular band name. To find the relative frequencies here, you'll calculate the proportion of votes each band name got out of the total number of votes. In order to find the relative frequencies, you need to know how many students were asked to vote. You were told there were 150, but it would be smart to sum the frequencies to double check. So, add a row to your frequency table for the sum of the frequencies. There were a total of 150 votes, as expected. Next, you add a column for your relative frequencies. You find the relative frequency for each category by dividing the observations within that category by the sum of the observations. For the first category, the geometries, you take 27 and divide it by 150, which equals 0.18, or 18%. Next, for the graphing gurus, it's 13 divided by 150, which approximately equals 0.09, or 9%. For the vectors, it's 5 divided by 150, which is approximately 0.03 or 3%. The binary beats had 94 votes divided by 150, which is about equal to 0.63, or 63%. Finally, 11 chose integer funk, so you divide 11 by 150, which approximately equals 0.07, or 7%. The next step is to check if your relative frequencies add up to 1, or 100%. This time they did, as they should. But they don't always. This last step is important because you often round your answers. So, if you notice that it doesn't add up to exactly 1, take a closer look at how you rounded the answers and make adjustments where necessary. The relative frequencies you added to the table help you understand the distribution better. Here, you notice that the clear majority, 63%, preferred the name the binary beats, while only 3% liked the vectors best. At a later stage, you will use relative frequencies to make a pie chart. That's another reason why you need to know this concept well. In statistics, you find the relative frequency by taking the observations in a category divided by the total number of observations.